But here's where it begins. Um, we've been looking at recurrence relations, right? And recurrence relations, thankfully for you, you'll generally be told when you, when you have to search for one. But as a mathematician, when you look at something like, what would signal to you, ooh, a recurrence relation would be useful in a context like this? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. There's a part of this where you're like, don't know what to do with this. Like, I don't actually know what that number is. And it sort of indicates to me that if I use integration by parts, if part of this is differentiated, then this part, by using chain rule here, it's going to climb down to n minus 1. And then it's going to climb down to n minus 2, and so on. And the recurrence relation will begin. Okay? So, the first part is just to get the recurrence relation. That's all we're trying to do. And do note this, um, this restriction here. Do you remember I said to you before, depending on the kind of function you've got, right, the, the kind of integrand you've got, the, um, your whatever n is, sometimes has restrictions on it. You can see if I allowed n equals 0 as a case, right, what would that integral be? It'd be the integral from one not to 1 of... It would be x times 1, because it's power of 0. Right? It's not x that's 0, it's m that's 0 um, with respect to x. Now, that's the integral of x dx. This is clearly in a different... Remember, I was talking about families of integrands, right? And it's, it's not in the same family anymore. Um, there's no log x term, so you'd expect it to be something very, very different. Okay? So that's going to play in for us later. We need to pay attention to that. Secondly, which is a bit new, I'm calling this evaluating recurrence relations. Good morning. Because you'll notice what's a d different thing, different feature from what we've looked at before, is that this is a definite integral. So I have boundaries here. Okay. Now don't forget, because so far all we understand of recurrence relations is built on, <coughs> excuse me, integration by parts. When you've got this bit, right? Um, the integral of u dv. Can you quote it for me? Equals u, equals u v take away integral of v du. And I did allude to you before, if you've got boundaries here and here, then we kind of expect, oh yeah, there must be boundaries here and here as well, but there are other boundaries hiding. Where are they? Yeah, this, there's this guy which has been integrated, so therefore it needs to be evaluated. Okay, so that's going to come into play. So let's how go at this. We're going to begin by thinking about, well, integration by parts. What would you like me to try? I'm looking for u, which will give me du, and I'm looking for dv, which will give me v. Suggestions? Do we always have to, because like in all the other questions, we split them up. Like when we had a power of n, we always went n minus 1, and then we had log x. Okay. But do we always need to do that? Yes and no. I feel like we did do another example where we didn't have to do that. Oh, okay. Now, when you have a look at this, do we, do we have to? I mean, for example, one of the ones we looked at was this guy. Actually, I think I did cos with you first. We looked at this, okay? And the reason we had to split it up is because integration by parts requires a product, doesn't it, to, to make it work, okay? Without doing any splitting of this power, I already have a product, yeah? I mean, I could split it further if I wanted to. There's, uh, you know, well, there's an n minus one, a number of ways of splitting up this product, but, say again. Doesn't that have a one in it? This one? Yes, it does. It does. So there's a 1 here, and there's a kind of cos n to the x. Or I could say, and I, which I think I did, I could take out a cos x, which leads me to cos n minus 1x. Okay, so that gives me some options. But when I look at this, I'm not pushed to that sort of requirement, because I already have a product there, and maybe that will be useful to, for me. Maybe it won't, but why don't we give it a shot? Okay. Now remembering that when we select the, the pieces, right, one of them gets differentiated, and so hopefully that's the part that gets successively better, and that's why there's a recurrence relation. And then there's the part that gets integrated, and you don't want to cause like a disaster there, right? So which of these do you think is the one that you want to differentiate, and which is the one you want to integrate? Um, the ln x to the power of n needs to be differentiated, so you don't have to integrate it again. Okay, very good. I mean, in some ways, the first thing you think about is, oh, I don't really know what to do with that if I were to try and integrate, okay? So that's one easy way of thinking. I think that's a candidate for differentiation. So I can go ahead and differentiate that now. Um, if I do the outside first, it's just something to a power. So I'm going to bring the power down the front, reduce the power by one. That was the outside. Now I should do the inside, which is one on x. Yeah? So I'm just going to write that like so. And I, and I could write it over x, but you'll see it's going to cancel a little bit anyhow. <laughs> we chose u, now I guess that leaves this for dv, which means that v, my integral, will be 
Excellent. Okay. Now, this is promising. This is promising because when you have a look at, I keep on calling it this, when you have a look at your green arrow, right, um, it's still a bit gross, but actually it's kind of exactly what we expect for a recurrence relation, yeah? I w I'm expecting something that looks like this, except with a power that's reduced by one. Tick, okay? And then there are some constants I'm going to have to deal with. So let's, um, let's write this line. <laughs> 